Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to talk about MQTT SN or MQTT for sensor networks. Now MQTT for sensor networks is nowhere near as popular as MQTT. It was actually specified after MQTT but it is actually a more simpler protocol than MQTT itself. Now the reason it was developed is because the IoT sensor networks are expected to be mainly wireless um, there's going to be thousands or millions of sensors and it's impractical to actually uh, physically wire all those sensors into a network and so the only alternative is to connect them wirelessly. Now MQTT for sensor networks was designed specifically to work on wireless networks. Now the main characteristics of those networks which drove the design are low power battery operated sensors with very limited processing power and storage limited payload size, it was actually developed to work across Zigbee I believe and not always on because they want to conserve battery so they switch themselves off and then they come back on and send the data and then switch themselves back off again. Now MQTT SN is designed as far as possible to work the same way as MQTT so whatever you've learned about MQTT is actually applicable to MQTT for sensor networks. Now MQTT SN versus MQTT now the main difference involved reducing the size of the message payload and removing the need for a permanent connection by using UDP as the transport protocol. Now remember UDP is a connectionless protocol as opposed to TCP which is a connection orientated protocol and has built in error control. UDP has none of that. Now the specification lists the following differences. Connect messages split into three messages, two are optional. The topic ID are used in place of topic names, so you use a number instead of a name which basically shortens the, the topic. The use of short topic names, which is two characters. Uh, predefined topics, these topics are defined on the actual broker itself, which means you don't have to negotiate a topic ID uh, before you can transmit data. And also incorporate a discovery process to let clients discover the gateway so you don't have to hard code the gateway address into the sensors, they can find the gateway themselves. Will topic and messages can be changed during the session which is quite different from MQTT which can only be set when you actually uh, start a session and it has an offline keep alive procedure for sleeping clients. So those are the, the main differences between the two protocols. Now the architecture, the specification, and I'll put a link to the specification in the video description below, uh, lists three components, an SN, MQTT SN client, a gateway and a forwarder. It doesn't actually list a broker which is strange, but if we look at the, the diagram, this is taken from the actual specification itself, now we've got an MQTT client, sorry, MQTT SN client and we've got another one here and they're talking to a gateway here but notice the message transfer seems to be between the client by the gateway to the client and that means that that is functioning as a broker. Now the communication if it goes from MQTT SN to, through the gateway to an MQTT broker then the, the gateway is providing a pure gateway function is basically translating between the MQTT SN protocol and the normal MQTT protocol and what you'll find is that you initiate a connection here and that connection goes through the gateway and connects to the broker here so on this broker here you'll see this client connected and this is a gateway standalone gateway with a, a broker over here this is a gateway built into the broker and we have another component here which is the forwarder and that basically again forwards MQTT as SM packets and it forwards them on to the, to the gateway. Now the specification uh, defines two gateway types as a transparent gateway where each M MQTT SM connection as the corresponding MQTT connection is a one-to-one -one relationship and if I go back to that diagram here that means there'd be a connection for this client to the broker and a connection for this client to the broker. So there'd be two connections. So if I looked at this broker I'd see two connections on the broker. And there's the aggregating gateway and in that case if this was an aggregating gateway then I've got two clients connected but I'd only have one connection to the MQTT broker over here. So if I looked here I'd just see the one connection for an aggregating, aggregating 
um, gateway. And it's a schematic that illustrates that. We see multiple MQTT connections, MQTT SN connections, and we see multiple MQTT connections on the other side of the, the gateway. And here's the aggregating gateway. And we only have one connection regardless of the number of uh, connections on this side of the gateway. Now, at first glance, uh, MQTT SN appears to require a connection. Now, this type of connection is a virtual connection because remember UDP is a connectionless protocol. However, there's a special mode of operation that doesn't require a connection, and we're going to look at that in a second. Uh, quality of service levels, it supports three, which is 0, 1, and 2 as per MQTT. It also supports a fourth, which is quality of service 3 or minus 1. And it's known as quality of service minus 1, but if you look at the flags, the flags are set to 1, 1, which is decimal 3 which is why it's Q of S3 or minus 1. Now, if you publish a message with quality service minus 1, it doesn't require the initial connection to be set up. It does require the use of short topic names or predefined topics, and it doesn't actually work with gateways. Now, this, when I first came across MQTT SN, this is the way I actually expected MQTT SN to work, uh, not requiring a connection. I was actually quite surprised that the main mode of working uh, actually requires a connection, uh, although it's actually a virtual connection. Now, subscribing to MQTT SN topics, the three ways of doing it, or three formats, there's a long topic name, as we're familiar with in MQTT, and there's an example of a long topic name here. There's a short topic name, which is two characters, so we just call it S1, S2, and there's a predefined topic ID, and that's predefined on the, on the server. Now you can use wildcards, but they only make sense uh, if you're using long topic names. And the note there saying predefined topics are defined on the gateway using using a list. So it's just basically a list of topic names, long topic names, and topic IDs. Now publishing messages, you can publish a message using a topic ID, a short topic name, two characters, and you can get a topic ID by either subscribing to the long topic name. So once you subscribe to the long topic name, it actually returns a topic ID. You use that topic ID to publish a message. Or you can register the long topic name. So you have a registration process. You register the topic name. You get, a, again, a topic ID back. And then you use that topic ID to publish the message. Or you can use the predefined topic ID, again, which need to be predefined on the, on the broker or the gateway. Now, in MQTTSN, you can actually get a published acknowledgement even to a quality of, quality of service level zero message. And this is because it is used to return an error message if the publish was rejected. Now, if you remember, MQTT itself doesn't return a published acknowledge to a quality of service zero message. Now, if you're publishing messages without a connection, which I think in the end will probably be the most popular application of this, you can publish without registering a topic or you can publish without subscribing to a topic using a pre-configured topic ID. Again, that's using a list on the server or using two character short topic names. In this mode, published messages aren't acknowledged. And I say this mode is ideal for simple sensors. So if you've got a simple sensor that comes on sending out the temperature, sending out a, a particular reading, it wakes up, sends the message, goes back to sleep it doesn't need a connection and I th as I said before I think this will probably be the most popular mode of operation for MQTT SN. So let's look at the gateway discovery process. There's actually two mechanisms used. There's advertising by the broker or the gateway which sends out advertising messages saying I'm a gateway and this is the uh, this is the address or it can be by a search by the client and both methods use a multi-pass multicast packet and Currently, there's no standard multicast packet address. Uh, there is a, a proposal on GitHub, which is very interesting, and I've got a, a URL here, which you may want to take a look at. As far as I know, that hasn't been implemented. So let's move on and look at topic registration. A client can register a topic with a broker, and a broker can also register a uh, topic with a client. So it's a two-way two thing. Now, a client registers a long topic name with a broker and gets from a broker a topic ID and it uses that topic ID when it wants to publish messages to the broker. The other way around, if a client subscribes to a wildcard, say, and I've got an example there, house wildcard, what happens when it receives a message on this topic here, 
it hasn't got a subscriber to this topic exact topic it's got a subscriber to the wildcard topic so in this case it needs to get a topic ID so it assigns a topic ID and then it actually sends a message to the client and tells the client that it's using this particular topic ID in a process called topic re registration which happens between the broker and the client rather than from the client to the broker which is the the normal case so topic registration can happen in both directions now MQTT SN software there aren't many uh, brokers and gateways available there's only two that I'm actually aware of there's the original one which is the RSM broker RSM B broker should I say developed by Ian Craggs of IBM and that was the basis for the Mosquito MQTT broker it was taken over by Roger Light and became the Mosquito MQTT broker the original RSMB broker hasn't been further developed since then uh, but it is available for download and I use it to do a lot of the demos and I'll include a link in the video description so if you want to download it at the moment it doesn't support predefined topics and sleeping clients however it does function as both a gateway and a broker now there's the official PAHO, PAHO Eclipse gateway and I believe this started again as a fork of the really small message broker and it works as a pure gateway it's part of the Eclipse official download and again I'll put a link in the description below for clients there's a, a Python client but it's a Python 2.7 client that comes with the source code for the RSMB broker now I've sort of ported that to Python 3 I, I modified it to work in a similar way to the uh, MQTT client the official MQTT client the files I confess uh, have lots of print statements left in them it's still a working process so I'm still working on it and hopefully one day I, I shall complete it it's available for download on the site and I'll give you a link to that so you're you're free to take it and you're free to continue on developing it if you're interested in it there's also one on github uh, I downloaded it but I, I didn't go to work I can't remember what the problems were with it but it did cause me problems so I gave up and I went back to using uh, my own client there's a C client available that's the, again part of the official download uh, I haven't used that uh, I keep meaning to have a go with that client it will probably be the most popular client in the future because MQTT SN is targeted low-level hardware and they need a low-level client there's also some tools on github which are worth worthwhile downloading now here they basically they're the MQTT SN publish and subscribe tools which you're familiar with if you've used MQTT we got the mosquito pub and the mosquito sub tools they're basically the MQTT SN equivalents and there they are on github for for download now node red which is a favorite of mine I haven't found anything on node red for MQTT SN I accept a a buffer module but no actual client uh, hopefully uh, someone will develop one so that's it uh, a quick introduction to MQTT SN if you're interested in getting started with it if you've got comments on the video then please leave them below if you like the video then you can click on the like button below and if you want to get notified of new videos to the channel you can always subscribe and feel free to share this video on social media if you use social media until the next time goodbye